Welcome to the second lecture in Traffic Econometrics uh, Master's course. Uh, in this course, we will uh, take on an actual um, example simulation and modeling of a COVID-19 uh, pandemic. It's a very um, interesting example because it contains all the classical econometrics models data uh, and you learn about the core of econometrics in a really um, a pressing and uh, uh, relevant example. So let's uh, give an overview. First, we will uh, learn some simple macroscopic models. Um, particularly the first one, the SI model, we know already from the first, the first lecture, it's nothing else as the uh, model for limited growth um, in another form and specialized to uh, um, infection dynamics. Then we will um, go to microscopic models shortly. Um, that's where not, there's not about averages, how many percentage of infected or healthy otherwise people, but every single person is seen as a particle. Then we will go down to earth to econometrics, all the data related issues and there are really many of them. And um, finally, we will, um, before coming to a conclusion, we will show some simulations at the Corona Simulation MDE. So just as a teaser, I will um, uh, show some of these um, simulations. This is the implementation of um, the one of the macroscopic models, an iterated map model, into the um, online simulator corona simulationde So you can yourself um, use the simulator to do some um, simulations. It starts at um, the beginning of March and it gives the first uh, big rise in the, in the spring. Um, so let's just um, um, go on. Now it simulates uh, until the uh, present. And you see now the second wave um, and you see the red bars are data, the black bars are data of the COVID-19 deaths, uh, the red one of the uh, positive tests. And also what is um, shown is a simulation that's just the uh, continuous line here, the, the checked line, which does not simulate the actual number of um, uh, infected, but what the data says. So that's uh, already the data issue, which is so crucial in econometrics. Then of course we can go on, um, simulate um, further, um, just as a, um, what can be done, just uh, will uh, uh, implement some um, uh, um, lockdown measures. So the um, base uh, ratio is uh, uh, vanishes, uh, just simulate uh, further. And you see how this will go down. But if we then increase it again, uh, lift the lockdown, uh, then it will after some time um, go up again. Okay, that's just the first impression about the simulator. So let's get um, to the models and the analysis. The first model we will um, consider is um, um, a simple macroscopic model called SI model. It is in the class of so-called compartmental models. Uh, that means all the people have um, different uh, status. Um, in the simplest one, the star, there are just two statuses. Uh, the S was for susceptible, that means susceptible to infection and I already um, infected. Um, as in any microscopic model, we will um, uh, use um, variables in terms of percentages or fractions of the population, um, because then it's easiest to model um, that with um, more and more immunity, um, the infection dynamics uh, gets uh, weaker and weaker. So these are the base um, uh, quantities. Further, as in any model, we, we need to uh, simplify a lot of um, things. 
Um, that is done by scale separation. Uh, the infection dynamics is much faster than the rest of a population dynamics that is basically um, uh, new uh, uh, births, uh, regular deaths, um, and also inbound and outbound um, a migration uh, moves of all sorts. That we just ignore during the um, um, infection pandemic dynamics, so the total population number n is, is, is constant. That simplifies models a lot without um, restricting any of the uh, prediction power. That's the basis of any um, econometric models. As um, um, remember the first lecture, Einstein's uh, quote, uh, make it as simple as possible, but not simpler. So specific to this model, um, this is just a simple mechanism. The people who are susceptible gets infected and the infection rate is proportional to the number of infected, obviously. The, um, if the inf number of infection doubles, then the number of um, infections, the new infections doubles, and also, of course, to the number of the susceptible uh, persons. So that's why we have two arrows, it's more as a product. Um, the rate of new infections is a product of the already infected and the uh, times the um, uh, number or a fraction of the susceptible ones. So um, now let's put it in terms of model equations. We need a further as, uh, uh, assumption. All infected persons became become contagious instantaneously. That means uh, um, no times without um, um, infectiousity, uh, in, instantly infection, infectious. And also the rate of contag contagion is constant. Uh, moreover, um, there's no third state because it's a simple model, there's no recovered state. That means they, they can remain contagious during the rest of their life, which obviously is a strong um, uh, simplification. But that's just the first, the simplest model. So according to Einstein, it will probably too simple, um, but it's um, um, good to understand the other models. So this is my model. The change rate of the number of susceptibles decrease because um, population number is constant and some of the susceptibles gets infected. And you can have exactly one state, either you are susceptible or you are infected. You cannot have both. So the number um, decreases with a product, as I already said, and a constant prefactor, which is the model parameter. And um, <coughs> um, in turn, the number of infection, uh, the fracture of infection increases um, just with the uh, same amount. So that if you have a sum, then of course it's zero because um, the sum of the susceptible and the infected is one, and that of course the time derivative of one is zero. So that's also um, 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 explicit here. But now of course we can use this sum condition to eliminate uh, one of the um, uh, uh, variables. So let's el eliminate the number of um, uh, the rate the fraction of susceptibles just by setting um, s equal 1 minus i. And then we get just, if we just insert in this way, so s, um, s equals 1 minus i, we get this. And then um, hopefully you remember, that is just the classical model of limited growth with um, here with saturation 1. So the um, rate of increase is at the beginning, if there are hardly any, the fraction of infected is nearly zero, um, but not exactly zero, but, um, very slow, very low, then this is one. And then we have just the exponential growth with um, um, growth rate beta. Um, if more and more people get infected and then hence immune um, for further infection, then the um, uh, growth rate things more and more, but if the infection, the pandemic will only stop if all are infected. And that's also shown in the in the simulation. Here I just use the model parameter 0.1 per day. That means at the beginning um, we have 
an exponential growth. And in 10 days, one over beta is 10 days, we have a factor um, of Euler numbers E. Or I say every um, seven or eight day, this means a doubling. But that's only at the beginning, then the saturation effect uh, sets in um, and uh, it will only stop if everybody is infected. Why is this the case? Because of the unreal, unrealistic assumption that uh, an infected person remains contagious during the whole la rest lifetime and also does not die because we have um, the number of persons uh, will not um, uh, of a change um, that means um, it only stops if uh, so this ever infected so this gobbled up all the susceptible persons so everybody is um, infected so we saw that the SI model is too simple so according to Einstein's quote uh, make models um, as simple as possible but not simpler as that, so the second part of the phrase was um, relevant for the SI model. So we add now one um, um, small addition. Instead of two compartments, like, like here, um, we will now have three compartments, and the third compartment is just um, um, the uh, no, new status of recovered. That means um, a person has w one of three statuses, first susceptible, then infected, and then uh, recovered. And he is contagious only in the second in the infection phase. So the first mechanism is the same as in the SI model, multiplicative um, uh, effect of the uh, uh, fraction already infected and the fraction of susceptible. And after some time, which is basically one over gamma, um, the infected get um, recovered. Um, it, it will, we will see that this um, uh, time distribution where um, people uh, are infected is exponentially distributed with parameter gamma, and that means the time, uh, the average um, time is one over um, gamma. So now let's um, look what uh, uh, the model with results. So the first part, as I said, this is just the SI mechanism, it's the same. Um, uh, a change happens at the second compartment, the infected one. The first is just um, uh, what is um, subtracted here, must be added here. But now after some time, um, the infected people get no longer infected, but are recovered. Or also, you could also say um, uh, removed. So that means it includes both the recovered and also the dying person. Um, in any case, they are no longer active in the um, infection dynamics once they have the status R. And of course, uh, because we already have, uh, we still have the sum, um, of all people is constant, that means the sum of the fractions x is 1, that means the um, uh, number of recovers increase with the rate gamma times the a fraction of infected. So if you take the sum of all that, then of course you have again um, 0, and this reflects that the, um, without a time derivative the sum of the fractions of course equals 1. So unlike the SI model, this uh, model has um, um, contains the famous reproduction number. That is the average number of people a given uh, infected person infects during um, his um, uh, period of being contagious. In the SI model, this R rate was infinity because um, the people. Uh, um, there was now our state, that means infected people remain contagious during the rest of the lifetime. So now let's, let's just um, um, see if we can show that the reproduction number is given by beta divided by gamma. How can you um, uh, see this? 
first consider a, a single infected person, it is contagious with a rate beta. Um, and uh, he is um, uh, contagious um, with a, um, during his uh, uh, period of being um, infected. And um, because this period is exponentially distributed with an exp expectation value one over gamma, that means this person infects on average the infection rate times the average um, lifetime infected, that is beta times one over gamma. And that's basically what I also here write, that is just beta times the expectation of the um, uh, period of being infected. So we have just beta over gamma is the reproduction rate of this um, model. Now let's just um, um, see a simulation, how it looks like. Um, so that is just the first the SI IR model. Um, I will compare them, that's hence this um, um, title. So we have just beta equal 0.2 per day. So I doubled the infection rate and the gamma equals 0.1 per day. That means the initial reproduction rate equals 2. Because every five days, one over beta, um, uh, an infected person infects another one on average, and the average infection duration is 10 days, so we have um, um, of 0.2 per day times 10 days equals 2 person, and that is when this uh, 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 rate. And that is just, in the beginning, it looks just like the um, SI model. So that's the SI model, and that is the SIR model. Just if you look at the at the blue uh, uh, number of a uh, fraction of um, susceptible, but um, because people change in the third uh, compartment in the recovered state, the red curve here uh, remains uh, relatively low. While in the um, SI model, of course, it um, will even detend um, to one. And you could say this is the number of active. Um, um, infections and also you observe that unlike in the SI model um, not everybody gets infected that means the number of uh, the rate of a fraction of susceptibles tends to zero but there is a certain uh, remaining rate uh, that is the so-called um, herd immunity that not everybody needs to get infected and the remaining um, of, of rate the remaining fraction of susceptible, of course, depends on this R0. If you make this R0 smaller, for example, 1.5, then this will um, be higher. But there's no simple relation between R0 and the remaining. Um, of it also depends. It... Okay, okay. So basically, this model is nearer to Einstein's postulate, um, make things um, simple but not um, uh, simpler than necessary. Um, but still, there um, is uh, um, one problem is with this um, um, simulation, with this model. Um, people get contagious instantly. So we saw that the SIR model was much better than the SI model, but one thing was missing find it incubation time. In the SIR model, people were um, contagious um, just at the beginning of the, uh, the own um, infection. So now uh, the next um, step to make the model more realistic is to add a finite incubation time. Um, in the simple uh, case, just an exponential distributed because only then we can write it in terms of a simple differential equation. And um, that means we add a new fourth compartment exposed. Exposed people are infected, but not yet contagious. So we have um, a triple chain. Um, that means um, um, three models which are chained um, um, according to the general economic change uh, uh, um, chaining. First, the multiplicative process is now not um, is. As, as it has been from the infected to the susceptible. Um, so it's a product of the fraction of infected i times the fraction of susceptible. Uh, and the, the difference is 
it will not result in an infected one, but in an exposed um, uh, uh, person. And only after some time, this um, exposed person will get um, uh, really infected. That means contact, yes. And um, then the rest is as, as it has been. Um, with the lifetime one over gamma, it gets um, a recovered um, person. Now let's look at the model equations. So the first equation is just the same as in the SI and in the SIR models. The second um, equation um, um, is the new one. That means um, the, uh, the subtraction of this does not get added to the infected, but to the exposed one. And also it has a new um, parameter, the average, uh, one over average lifetime of being um, uh, exposed, of being non-contact, I guess, and uh, then um, you get really infected, and the rest is um, as in the SIMR uh, model. So, can we... Um, um, did you use just from these equations some dynamic properties of this uh, model? For this, I have uh, prepared um, two questions. The first question is again when, um, a question about the um, reproduction number um, at, the in at the initial time. That means how many persons an infected uh, person infects on average um, at the initial stage, where everybody is um, susceptible. Um, and here the solution is the same as in uh, the SIR model. Um, this number is just uh, the exposure time, which is just um, given by uh, 1 over ga gamma, because that's the time where people are in the infected stage, as in a contagious stage, multiplied with the rate of um, infection, uh, infection rate. So it's just the infection rate beta multiplied by the time, average time one over gamma. So it's just as in the ISIR model. Now to the next question. Um, the doubling time. That means the time that uh, at, um, initially the number of um, um, infections doubles. How can this calculate it? Basically, you need um, the, <coughs> the time where um, which uh, passes between the own infection and the average time where the uh, people infects um, another a person. And this is typically um, given by um, the incubation time, because where no, nobody gets infected with incubation time. Um, um, and then that is with alpha, so incubation is exponential alpha distributed, that means the uh, average incubation time is 1 over alpha. And then um, in the infection phase, um, um, that's the lifetime of the infection phase, and um, assuming you um, a people gets um, gets infected at the end of this infection time, then it's just additional one over gamma. If it's in fact in the middle, it's uh, it's maybe only one half times one over gamma, um, but it's a, it's a household number anyway. So this is the time where um, um, average time passing between um, two infections. Um, so how many? Um, then, of course, um, how many doublings have occurred in this time? Here, the reproduction number comes into play. If the uh, reproduction number would uh, be equal to 2, then there's just one doubling in this time, then the denominator is, um, is, is 1. If it's, if it's 4, then 2 plus doublings, 2 times 2, uh, 2 uh, squared equals 4 would uh, happen, then where uh, 2 would be a denominator. And generally, it's just the binary logarithm of the uh, reproduction rate. Of course, in this initial uh, 
um, over, uh, over the touch number, you could insert this beta divided by gamma. That means this time depends on all three uh, parameters. So now let's um, um, simulate it. By the way, the simulation is, is quite easy. Um, although um, it seems like a complex um, differential equations where um, very st standard straightforward means to to approximately um, integrate uh, that means solve these equations based on on some initial value. Of course, you need an initial value here. For example, I assume that initially um, we have. Um, Expose uh, portion a percentage of 0.1% and also an infection percentage of 0.1% and all the rest is susceptible. That means nobody is recovered um, at, the, at the beginning. And then um, you just start and it looks similar like the SIR model. The only difference is that now you have um, um, two um, different compartments um, uh, both are infected, only that this exposed compartment um, people are not contagious and then this red compartment they are um, contagious. Otherwise, um, also the outcome looks similar, that particular um, there is some sort of um, um, herd immunity, no, not everybody needs to get infected. So here the um, wave just vanishes, although they are 20% um, not infected. And this again depends on this parameters, mainly on the um, R uh, value, that means of on beta divided by a uh, gamma. So now um, the question is, what happens um, that um, now in the autumn, um, the um, infection rate um, increases again. What, um, what is the reason? Um, obvious reason as is also the flu. Um, winter is flu time and that is um, basically with any um, uh, illness of the respiration system. Um, so uh, how do we model it? Make the um, reproduction the reproduction rate time dependent. This for example uh, can reflect that in summer people are outside there are uh, less um, um, uh, virus particles and therefore just um, um, the uh, infection chance is, is smaller. Although the um, behavior has not changed and um, that means I just make the reproduction um, number that means the ratio of beta divided by gamma um, time um, dependent. So since uh, gamma um, that is the, um, the life uh, um, uh, that is the reflects the duration of the um, uh, contagious phase is um, basically a, um, a virus property, uh, not a season property. Um, we make the parameter beta um, time dependent. So beta equals just gamma times R0. That is just because R0 is beta divided by gamma. So I just um, uh, solved it for beta and make beta time dependent. And uh, this is, <coughs> as an example, um, a simulation. Um, first look at this black curve. This is just the time dependent reproduction rate. Um, a maximum of two um, in the um, uh, coldest uh, uh, um, uh, and darkest period beginning of January, uh, uh, start of January. Um, so this um, and um, in Ju June it's uh, a little bit below one. It's, it's just an assumption. Uh, um, simulation starts um, March 1, that's uh, basically uh, where also the real um, uh, pandemic starts in Germany. Um, there's a, a first wave and then this wave um, um, vanishes 
uh, first uh, because of uh, this R is going below one and also because some uh, of, uh, a small percentage already is infected so there's a very small herd immunity already active. You can see that the blue curve may be a 10%. Then the um, uh, autumn is beginning um, and you see and this R again um, by our model um, goes beyond one and with a significant delay also the infection, um, the second wave uh, starts. So s such seasonal uh, changes can explain um, why there are um, several waves. Of course other reasons uh, for changing R's are all sorts of um, distance rules um, up to lockdowns. So, um, um, and that's basically why there are waves and people, either people respond to it or the, um, it's just the winter is over and um, if a significant amount is still not um, uh, susceptible, not no herd immunity is reached, then you get another wave. So now to a new class of models, <coughs> you might think these differential equations are a little bit complex and they are also quite unflexible regarding the distributions of the infections and recoveries and all that. Basically they are all exponential distributed because otherwise you cannot write in this uh, differential equation um, form. So another um, more straightforward approach would be <coughs> um, iterated map models which automatically includes a memory. For example a model which is also the basis of my um, uh, corona dash um, simulation dot de um, it's basically as a SIR model with memory so I call it SIRM um, it's very easy infected person contacts R0 persons um, and infects R0s from them that means if at the beginning s equal 1 then here every contacted person is infected later on only the persons who are not yet infected um, and he does so exactly tau i days after his or her own infection. So um, this automatically includes also this e exposed phase because only um, exactly tau i days after infection you get infected. Of course you can make it more complicated by um, in introducing a range of days where one get, can get infected. That means uh, make your own custom-made um, distribution. Um, that's actually done in the uh, simulation, but here we leave it at the simple case, just a single day, tau i after the own infection, you can infect other people and you infect, you infect R, C or S persons. That of course means I also need, uh, when starting this model, the history of all um, previous times, um, <clears throat> at least tau i days I must go um, to the past, um, because otherwise I could not um, um, get this. So the next assumption is, um, um, each person recovers exactly tau r um, the recovery time after um, the infection. Uh, that means um, the total fraction of ill persons at uh, a given day is given just by the um, uh, all the persons in the last tau r days which got infected in the last tau r days because afterwards uh, you are um, recovered or removed. That means the infection um, that is the actual percentage of infections. It's just the sum of all the people who get infected exactly at day J. So with this, we can also set up the model. So the, um, the fraction newly infected at the time at day T is just uh, with the first assumption, is just um, um, R0S um, 
times the um, number of infected uh, people at time t minus tj. And of course also the uh, susceptible people must be taken at this um, um, time. So the um, susceptible persons of course are just uh, subtracted from the newly um, um, by the newly infected uh, one. So it's just um, uh, that means the susceptible yesterday are just um, the susceptible today are just susceptible yesterday minus the newly infected. Uh, the recovered are just the recovered yesterday plus the um, uh, people who got infected tau r days um, ago. And finally, just by the sum rule, we can. Um, calculate the um, total number of actually infected. We could also use this sum, but um, um, this is um, easier. Note that the recovery does not influence the infections process, um, since only at a single day tau i um, the whole the people are contact yes. It also includes automatically this e this exposed component because the um, uh, the day of um, um, contagion can be um, set. Now let's um, simulate it. <clears throat> uh, basically this looks similar to this SI um, uh, EIR model. Um, so it's just another uh, variant but which is more flexible so I use it for my simulator um, uh, because where I can um, set up observed um, uh, time scales quite freely. So now we come shortly to uh, um, another model class, microscopic models. Um, it's basically, you know, from the first lecture, um, uh, microscopic versus macroscopic models. The microscopic models are just um, um, you did reduce the um, dynamics to the smallest relevant unit. That of course here is the single uh, person. So that means single persons are just the particles and um, I just, for example, if I use the SEI uh, R model, then the, um, I can just say each person has uh, the status of each person is exactly one of the four uh, possible values s i e e s e i or r um, then the transition is just um, here you can for example um, use what what's also in this um, uh, corona one app um, of the government um, you get um, um, contacted and if you are uh, susceptible infected, if you get nearer to a contagious an S person um, sufficiently near and also for a sufficiently long time. That means we have a rule, um, the person I changes from an S to an um, e, sta e state, exposed state, if the distance in the past is smaller than, for example, 1.5 meter, and this uh, must be valid for the whole time interval t dash satisfying um, t minus tau exposed um, uh, between t dash between t. That means um, the duration must, must be at least um, tau exposed, and the distance must be at most um, a critical distance, for example, 1.5 meter. Then uh, the discrete SI event um, takes place. Um, the rest is uh, pretty easy. Um, it's, it's just as in this iterated map model, um, transition to an I person after an um, incubation time and a transition to an R person um, after the um, recovery a time. So the pandemic micro model is easy. Um, 
of what is not so easy is to to get the motions because that's the advantage of the microscopic models. Unlike the macroscopic models, you can um, model such things as um, super spreading events. You can even uh, um, um, uh, simulate how much does traveling add to the um, uh, contamination. Uh, so, um, but of course you need to model uh, the people. That's also called moving agents. You move them to and fro, and um, according to these rules, you um, uh, let them get infected or um, uh, contact yes, and eventually healed. So let's just look at it um, in a, a visualization. So let's um, say these are the different people. You here you see two groups, one group, two group, and also the four colors stand for the four possible states, susceptible, exposed, contagious, and um, recovered. Um, here you see, here, here in this, um, only the red person, the contagious one, can um, uh, infect new people. So here this group is safe, because here are um, exposed people, but they are not yet uh, contagious, so nothing happens. These red people are sufficiently um, uh, from far away from other people, and also this one, so nothing happens. Uh, contact, uh, con um, infection takes place here, because here are three um, blue people, um, sus uh, susceptible people, which get infected by this um, red um, uh, person. So, these are no longer blue, but um, uh, um, orange, because they are now exposed. Um, and also, let's let's see if something else has um, changed. For example, this was red. It now became green because um, the tau r, the recovery time for this person, has been reached. Um, so what what happens further? Now we let move this um, person, this newly infected person. We let move to this other group. Um, it still is um, um, not yet uh, contagious, no, it's still exposed. Um, now let's go further. Now we get uh, now both this person and also this other person, which were um, exposed, now reach the infectious stage. And also this, all this uh, all orange people now get, get right. And we have two new infection events. Uh, these people are close to others, but not to susceptible ones, so no, no, nothing happened, because these already are um, recovered and immune. This is a uh, um, um, infection event, and also this, because remember, I, I go back one, so this was um, gets um, from exposed and uh, contagious and infects um, this one. So the next time step, these are now the um, new um, exposed people. And you see this is quite flexible depending, you, you can move the people in groups and um, then you can set up scenarios um, to see what um, happens. So now let's come down to earth, down to reality and econometrics, um, which not only needs uh, modeling, but also statistics and data and comparing the models with data. In order to compare it with data, we need first to um, check what do we want to know and what can be observed. So what do we want to know? Of course, the number of infections. Um, idea also it's infection age structure, because then you can um, predict how many people will get um, of, um, they need to be treated um, uh, medically, um, and to, you can you can take care. Maybe also you can take measures in order uh, that um, all the um, health infrastructure gets not um, overlay overloaded. Unfortunately, we do not know this. Um, we only know the number of positive tests. That's also called cases. And also we know the number of um, COVID-19 deaths, because assuming that unlike the 
uh, cases where many people are um, left out because they are just ill but not tested. Uh, the COVID-19 deaths will more or less, at least in developed countries, be reported nearly uh, completely. So, however, um, these two, um, one can also say proxies for the real thing, um, have many uncertainties. And now I will just show one of the many, uh, a few of the many uncertainties. Uh, first, about the tests. Um, not every positively tested is infected, really, and not in every infected person is positively uh, tested. Um, first, the tests have an imperfect sensitivity. Sensitivity means that's an error of the first kind, also alpha error. That means the probability that um, of a sensitive is, uh, is 1 minus the alpha error. That means the probability that, um, that an infected person is tested positively if it is uh, tested. So this is 1 minus alpha, and alpha is the alpha error. That means an infected person is not tested positively. And this is uh, about 99%, of course, it depends on the test. Um, more serious is the uh, beta error or the false positive error. That's 1 minus the specificity. The specificity of a, a test is just the probability that a not infected person is tested negatively. So the complementary probability is the beta error, that is just the probability that um, the test is positive although I'm not infected. That is a so-called false uh, positive. And that is, um, uh, uh, f can be a rather bad thing and leads to wrong conclusions as we will see in the tutorial to this um, lecture. But even you could say, um, and that is that, that's uh, um, uh, evident, but um, uh, the cause of that, that's um, uh, a tricky issue. How is a COVID-19 death which is reported and which you can look up in the figures, for example in the voltometer, um, how is this defined? Um, the famous thing is, uh, did you die because of COVID-19 or did you die while simultaneously having COVID-19? In the extreme, um, think you have a deadly car accident. Um, you are um, um, killed and um, you before that you are positively tested. Um, are you now a COVID-19 death or not? Obviously not, but it's unclear if this is tested, if this is also added to the um, uh, as COVID-19 death. I hope not, but um, say more tricky issues, for example, if you um, die from one of the other illnesses you have, often the people have um, um, many uh, serious issues and um, uh, they die of one of them. So, so that's an issue, but it's um, at, at least it's a good proxy. Um, but third, which now, now back to the tests, um, the tests not only have an imperfect sensitive and an imperfect specificity, also the sample of the tested people is unclear. Um, there may be a high number of untested and potentially ill people. That means there is a high number of unreported cases, which is probably much higher than the number of reported cases. That means the positive um, cases. Um, uh, moreover, this, um, it's high and unknown. So a fraction of the reported cases um, depends obviously on the number of tests. That's also a, um, um, often uh, an argument brought uh, forward often. Obviously, the more you test, the more um, illnesses you detect, but it's not linear because um, at first you, te you only test the obvious cases and then if you have more tests available also less obvious or to do a mass screening. 
So we can only say it's a monotonously increasing but otherwise unknown um, function. The last part of this lecture are actual simulations. Uh, it means I present the simulator at corona minus simulation.de where you can interactively simulate um, by yourself as well. So we saw already at the beginning um, the simulation for Germany. Now let's look at the different interactive elements you can use. The most crucial thing is the base R value R0. Um, when you just start the simulator it will move automatically um, because it's uh, while simulated it's also calibrated such that the um, simulated uh, positive cases, uh, positive test cases reflect just the observed positive test cases. These are these red bars versus the uh, brown line which is just uh, the simulation. It's so calibrated that the base R value reflects um, this. You can also um, change the start of the infection period. That means um, it's similar to this um, uh, SIR um, model with uh, memory, only that uh, the infection phase is not at a single t time, but it starts two days after the own infection. So we get contact years two days after the own infection and the in minimum incubation time is then um, two days. Then you are contact years until um, end of the infection period. It's, so it's eight days. And crucially also, because the simulator is not about the only the simulation of the um, dynamics, but also about the measuring process. And one aspect of a measuring process is when do you measure and here test after five days. Internally it's also distributed between three and uh, seven days. So it's uh, also um, a, a small distribution. And then there's also the percentage reported. This also as the R value moves at the start um, because it's just uh, according to a formula um, which in fact, you do not know the actual uh, uh, um, uh, um, percentage of reported cases. You only know that it's an increasing function of the number of tests and, um, and it's less than linear because at the beginning, if you have few tests, you only test the uh, most uh, suspicious cases. And if you have very, very many tests, you test nearly everybody up to a mass screening. Um, so I just said if it would be 100% if all people t are tested every week and then if it's if a uh, uh, test frequency is less then it's just a square root number so it's if it's 20% uh, that means it's 1 25th of this um, fully coverage um, so you can also not only um, uh, move uh, the different sliders you can also have um, several windows the main window is the cases window. We can also have accumulated cases that was um, displayed at the beginning of a, um, a pandemic, but it's a little bit misleading because, uh, but for here uh, with the number of deaths, you also get the um, situation at the beginning um, uh, memory. And so this um, true cases is, um, is more relevant here. You see there's um, less deaths than here, although the rate of positive tests is uh, much um, higher. Then you can all have also a window um, which has a logarithmic scale, 10, 100,000 and so on. And you see the true simulation because up to now you saw only the tests and what um, the simulation, um, the simulated tests. That means uh, the uh, empiric side. Now comes the actual um, a theoretic side, that is the simulated number of um, um, simulated contaminations um, because of the uh, underreporting, much more contaminations that were actual cases. Um, and uh, so these are actual cases. Here you see the points, the dots, which are the data. And here you see the, uh, that the 
number of active cases, that means the people are, who are in the um, high compartment um, in, the, in the model uh, uh, decreases but never gets to zero and now increases again. And finally, you have also um, you have, uh, you have the test um, a window. Here is the oil that is uh, um, related in detail to test, particularly how many tests. You see that uh, today, um, of why yesterday is also one day is uh, the data from yesterday, so it's the November 4th. So this video is taken at uh, November 5th of 2020. You have um, 5,000 times 100, 500,000 tests. Typically, you have about 250,000, 250,000 tests. That means per week you have 1.5 million tests. But now it seems that they maybe even increase even further. Uh, and you see also green the simulated daily false positives, assuming uh, a false positive rate of um, point um, three percent. So now let's, uh, so we have simulated um, Germany, we have also at the beginning simulated the uh, forecast of Germany. Now let looks at uh, different countries, for example, um, the Czech Republic. So here you see that unlike, uh, so it's a, it's a huge um, increase of um, of the uh, infection activity but now it seems at present it seems to already um, uh, have peaked let's look ju let's just simulate further without changing anything okay it seems that the uh, um, uh, pandemic in Czechia is already at the peak and now is um, um, declining so this is a strong prediction uh, let's see if it passes the time test we will can see in same December, January, if it really um, declined, um, uh, at, um, peaked at the beginning of November and it declined. So this is, as I said, just for history, this is um, uh, taken at the November 5th, um, the simulation of the situation at November 5th. And you can also, um, if you look at the slides, I will not uh, show them up now because it's um, too much hassle. Um, this shows the status one week earlier, where the situation simulation was says it first increases a bit and then decreases. So um, in this week, the simulation has got it already right. You can also have um, other interesting countries. For example, you can look what happens in Sweden because Sweden has another um, uh, a strategy. Um, You see that um, obviously the strategy also did not have too much. We have also now um, uh, a rather high um, a number of, of, of cases. And if you here just um, increase, then it will also uh, go a little bit further, but then it will um, uh, decrease again. Okay, so that was just an impression of the uh, um, uh, simulation. Now let's come to the conclusion. So I think with this actual case of econometric modeling, uh, modeling and simulating the COVID-19 pandemic, we have learned a few things about um, econometrics also in general. The first one is only data brings us down to earth. Only then um, uh, we can uh, test model quality. Um, are the models good at all and also doing useful things such as a projection scenarios. I on purpose uh, hold projection scenarios not a prediction or forecast um, because we, we saw that they were quite uh, sensitive um, to the assumptions so you do not um, you must not forget Mark Twain's quote about predictions so um, um, it means um, uh, predictions are difficult, uh, particularly if they concern the future. So also um, and check 
all the definitions. That's just as in statistics. You need to to, to check um, of all the the definitions of all the quantities. For example, what is in COVID nineteen infection, um, and also to check that it's um, unlike the positive cases. Um, or what is in COVID-19 death? Does it include um, the fatal traffic accidents or um, of test positive persons or not? So the next thing, um, do not confuse or mix uh, proxies with real quantities. Uh, proxy that comes from approximation, that's something that approximates the real thing and can be measured. For example, um, a positive test is a proxy for an infection an infection event. But you may not confuse or mix these two um, completely different um, uh, uh, events. Also, you need um, to check how well the proxy um, represents the interesting quantities. For example, um, if there are only little tests, the number of positive tests is a poor proxy for the number of infections, just because the sample is small and the sampling rate is unknown. However, the number of recorded COVID-19 deaths is a much better proxy for all the, of them, because here the uh, unreported case, the percentage of unreported case is uh, very little, so the underreporting is nearly zero, while here we have a big underreporting. Uh, then, of course, um, check your sample. Does it represent uh, the population? Um, is it essential population itself, a full sample, or is it an unknown fraction thereof? Um, that is essential for your interpretation. And finally, be careful with exponential growing things. Because particularly there, um, small changes in the scenario can uh, greatly influence the results, sometimes even qualitatively. Um, uh, if one predicts either a second or third wave or not, depending on small changes of the settings before. So Mark Twain's uh, quote is, more, uh, is even more um, uh, pressing for exponentially going things as it is normal wise. Um, predictions are difficult, particularly if they um, concern the future. So this was the second lecture for Econometrics as a Master Course. Uh, many thanks uh, for watching.